All right, I'm back. Um, I had started this project uh, with another recording. It didn't go too well, so I figured I'd uh, start. It's not quite over. Uh, as you can see, some of this is already painted. Now, this is uh, some scenery for uh, the Fallout Wasteland Warfare tabletop game. This is something that I 3D printed. I do have the miniatures that go with the game. Now, as you can see, this is a very large piece of uh, scenery in comparison to the miniature, um, which is good because it gives something to block in the game, block a uh, line of sight, and stuff like that. And I like printing larger pieces personally because, well, it's easier to paint. So what I've done so far, I painted um, a bit of this uh, gas station piece uh, uh, silver. Uh, it was pretty bright, I found, but it worked. Uh, I did a nice gray for the fencing, um, a bit of gray for this hubcap here, and also for the uh, oil drum, gas drum, I guess you'd call it that. So. Now, what I want to get doing, I also did a bit of a blue on this crate. Uh, you know, fallout blue. <laughs> it's never never really good that way, but uh, that's going to be dulled down a lot, you'll see. Um, over here, I believe this was like the food replicator type of thing from fallout, so I'm going to probably paint that red. Uh, and I'm also going to get some red into the gas pump. Uh, the tires are black, so I'm good with that. I'm going to leave those black. And then uh, I'm probably going to do some brown around uh, the, the waste stuff here. There's also a, a caution sign here that I'll have to get some yellow onto. Um, now I have primed everything black. As you can see it was printed in white, but uh, everything is primed black. I prefer priming in black for some things, uh, especially for fallout things because it's usually dark. So let's get started. Let's get some... Let's get some of that red on here for these other things. Now I've got some different things. I've got um, Citadel paints uh, from Games Workshop and a lot of Vallejo paints. Now the Vallejo is a very bright, bright red that I've got, a scarlet it's called, which I think is going to be too bright. So I think I'm going to go over to my Citadel paints here and use the base paint. This is uh, Mephiston Red, so I'm going to give it a good shaking up here. Now I do have quite a few colors, but I can always use more. I definitely need a lot more colors. This thing here, I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, originally I thought it might have been a lamp post, but it looks like it, I don't know, it looks like wiring maybe. Really hard to tell what that is. But hey, we'll figure it out. Now I'm using um, some white cardstock here. As you can see over here, I have uh, used it as a palette already, and I, I like using it as a palette because it uh, allows me to mix my colors quickly, and you know I can get rid of the paper at the end. So we'll get some red going on to this because it's uh, this is a base paint, which means it's going to cover over really well. Uh, it's a thicker pigmented paint and that's <laughs> that's good for what I'm doing here. Again, like the other parts, even though that video doesn't exist anymore, I just go generally over it to start. I can go in and touch up uh, some of the finer pieces later. And who knows, I me talking here might not even make it down to the final cut. I might uh, end up overdubbing it. I don't know. This is my first uh, first video that I'm doing of me painting that wasn't done on Facebook Live. Um, I did that once quite a while ago and it, it went okay. The hardest part I had was being able to follow along in a chat while trying to paint. Uh, wasn't a uh, it wasn't a great combination, really. But it was fun. Um, 
the few people that were watching enjoyed it, I think. It was uh, back at the beginning of the quarantine, actually. Uh, well, quarantine pandemic. Um, so people were, you know, sitting at home wondering what to do. And I figured, hey, I'm going to record me doing a hobby. And that hobby was painting miniatures. I've been 3D printing miniatures a lot lately. 3D printing lots of stuff actually. I don't know if it can be heard on camera, but the 3D printer is going in the background. It's making a lot of noise. Alright, so that's pretty much done there. Um, there's some stuff on the side I gotta hit yet. It's hard to see some of these areas, and I, I apologize for my erratic motions with this. I, I'm trying to keep it within the camera view, but I tend to go off to the side a bit. Um, so what I'm, I'm hoping to do here in, in the future, I'm going to be painting a lot of things on this channel, and I'm, I'm considering setting up a Patreon. I'm starting to sell uh, prints and whatnot. So what I'd like to be able to do is I'll be producing content regularly if I do a Patreon, which means I'll be doing a lot of painting. I'm going to try to learn some new techniques and share them on here as well. I'd like to get better equipment to be able to record these things. That's that's my ultimate goal. Um, better recordings, better quality, better equipment to do it with. But what I'd like to do, and this is just me spitballing on painting here, is I'd love to be able to paint some stuff throughout the month on Patreon minimum like two videos a week maybe and then do a giveaway on some of my uh, my paints uh, so now here's one thing I've got a little bit of paint left on the brush normally I would dry brush using my dry brush but being I've already got the paint on here I'm just gonna get a lot of it off of the paintbrush itself and then I'm just going to hit the uh, the oil drum thing here with a bit of red paint. Just give it, you know, it was once maybe painted red. So you can still see the silver coming through. I hope that can be seen on camera. Here, I'll use my uh, magnifier here to bring it up nice and close. So you can see a little bit of the red in there. Alright, give that brush a washing. Then, the next step I'm going to do on this, I want to get that caution sign. But yellow and black do not go well together. So, what I'm probably going to do first, there's not a lot to the caution sign. Let me see if I can get it shown on camera there. It's pretty faint in there, right? You can see the exclamation point, but that's about it. So, I just want that and the surround to, to pop. So to do that, I'm going to grab a little bit of my white primer. And I'm just going to go over it very gently with a smaller brush. Probably smaller than what I just grabbed out there. There we go. There's a nice fine brush. Just to give it a little bit of a base of white. that 
will allow me to go over it again in yellow afterwards and it should pop up. Now I'm going to grab my magnifying light here. It allows me to see it a little bit better anyway. Now as I said, this is a larger piece that I 3D printed that I'm painting now. But I am going to be doing miniatures. And I definitely need this magnifying light for doing miniatures because my eyes are not that good. a lot of fine lines and again I'm not being really perfect with this it, it is scenery for for fallout like it being so yeah you see just a little bit of white I gotta move my light back up a little bit of white to cover it up a little bit that'll come out afterwards now this thing here I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a pipe of some sort. It seems to have stuff holding it down. So what I'm going to do to get the primer off of that little brush, I'm going to need it for the yellow after. Let's so leave this guy out there for me. I think what I'm going to do is hit the dry brush. And this is a technique. I, when I learned this, I loved it. I normally wouldn't use chrome on something like this, but I really want this to pop out. It's either chrome or just like a standard gray. Nah. This is the thing. my world. I can do what I want with it, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of chrome, just a drop of it really don't need much of this. These are the joys of paints like this. So just take a little bit on your brush and you get as much of it off as you think you can. And then just lightly rub it on. Well not so lightly, I can be pretty rough with it. But it's just going to catch all those high points on it. Well, let's go back in get a little bit more. But it's not overpowering. See, the black is still predominant in it. So dry brushing makes a huge difference in a lot of things. It's good for getting highlights. I said it's not bright. I don't want it bright. I want it very muted. I say that as I go and hit it a few more times with the paint, but in certain areas it, it can be brighter. Because again, I'm going to be probably going over all this with a wash anyway. At least some areas of it are going to get hit with a wash. And that'll just pop that out a little bit so it's it's still muted but it does jump out with a nice gray color so I'm just gonna hit the hubcap with a bit of the uh, chrome I just want that hubcap to pop out of the dirt a little bit okay and I don't always wash my dry brush because it's usually gray that I'm using anyway. <laughs> or a chrome color. Alright, what else can I do on here while we're waiting for some of these to dry? Now well, the red's no longer tacky. So you know what? I'm actually going to use a bit of that chrome with my very thin brush. 
and hit a couple details on the food dispenser thing. Red and chrome are a great combination. Really makes it stand out. Again, I'm just using my light here so I can magnify it and see it better. The problem with the magnifying is sometimes I get too close, too quick. Yeah, I'm being right up front with y'all here. I can make a mess sometimes. See, now I'm going to need to go and hit that thread where I kind of slobbered a bit. Touch it up, and it's all good. You'd never know I hit it. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of detail. Again, it's just scatter terrain. Um, it's just nice to have some color into it. it. Takes breaks away from the board a little bit when you're playing the game. Makes things stand out, which is always fun. All right, so now we got that caution sign. It is dry. So now we got to decide what yellow I want to hit it with. I think the brightest yellow I got is probably going to be this Flash Gits Yellow. I have two pots of this, and I don't know why. Yellow is very hard to paint with. That I have learned. It's, it's probably one of the hardest colors to manipulate. So we'll see how it works. In the end, it's probably not going to matter too much. It's just yellow doesn't have a lot of pigment in it, I don't think. Even though it's nice and bright yellow. Let's see. We're going to find out here pretty quick. Make sure making this go from white to yellow, right? It may take a couple of uh, coats to really make that yellow pop. I'm not too concerned about it popping actually because when I hit it with the wash it's all going to go away anyway. Well not go away, it's going to mute Well, that turned out decent enough, I think, for yellow. Alrighty. So, now what I want to do is get some brown. The dirt doesn't need to be black. So, what do I have for a nice brown color? See, I've got a lot of contrast paints. It's not going to work well with that. Uh, let's see. No, that's gold. We definitely don't want gold. A lot of base paints that are brown over here. How about Warren Fang Brown? Now, I know a lot of the colors in... Uh, the Citadel stuff is made for uh, Warhammer. Not a game I play, so that's why when I'm saying the color names, I don't know what they are. I've not used them before. I've not played the game before, so when it says Morn Fang Brown, I don't know what that is. It's a character, I'm guessing. So, 
dip into this brown here and we'll start getting that on the ground I'm going to assume part of the sign is still poking through because well, you can see the the exclamation mark so see now putting the brown on some of the black is still coming through and that is quite all right um, it's dirt some of the earth can be black. I have no problem with that. Now, if I had primed white, a lot of the white would be showing through, and I don't think that would have been as nice. The black makes it look kind of shadowy the parts that shine through. And once I get this layer on, there's something I'm going to do that's going to be kind of fun. It's one of the more recent paints that I bought. And I bought it specifically for painting the fallout stuff. But I'm not going to give that away. Oh, and don't be shocked, um, you're only going to see painting mostly on on this channel. Um, will you ever see my face? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows, maybe I'll uh, do a video of playing the game with some of the miniatures and scenery once I've got some of it painted up. I've already painted up some things. Um, I've probably got half a table worth of buildings painted down there before I decided, hey, this would be fun to record this and post it. Maybe other people will get inspired to paint some miniatures. Do some tabletop gaming. Hard to say. I know. I enjoy it. It is pandemic times, um, which means getting together with friends isn't happening. And that sucks. Especially for tabletop gaming, because it's hard to play these games remotely. I haven't even tried, actually. But, uh, there are some board games that play nicely, um, remote. Um, some of them are available on like Steam and Board Game Arena. See, here I'm getting some brown on that pipe. That's fine. Dirt. Bob Ross would say it's, it's not good. It's my world. It's happy little dirt. Not many trees in my follow universe it seems. Mind you, I have a lot of tree stuff for my Viking miniatures game, which I'll be printing some of as well. Alright, so there we go. We got a layer of brown down. Um, it's starting to take shape. I'm starting to like it. I really feel that sign should have been painted silver before I put the uh, other stuff on. Because having the black on the sign there. It's kind of odd. But, whatever. Brown really gets deep into the brushes. Especially the base paints. They're, as I said, very pigmented. All right, so now we got that. Now I wanted to uh, 
have some fun with this. Actually, before I go too far, I want to hit... I've got a little bit of a rust. I'm going to throw a little bit of rust on some of these pieces before I go much further. They're metal. They may have rusted. Let's find out, shall we? Oh, that's a dark rust. Let me dry brush it. Just on to... some of the edges here. Yeah, that's not going to work as a dry brush. Right. It's a little bit more, I guess. I don't want to just coat it on either. It's just hitting it ever so lightly on the sides. There we go. Now it's starting to look rusted at least. Back up here. Layer the rust on there. So the silver's still coming through nicely. But it looks like there's been a layer of rust on it. It's always fun to just throw a bit of rust on some pieces. When I uh, had been painting for Gaslands, rust is a great piece to have. Rust on everything. Alright, now that I've done that, now i got to get my fallout paint. When I saw this in the store, I was like, I have to have it called Technical Tesseract Glow. This takes a lot of shaking, which is fine. But this stuff, this is the definition of radioactive. Like, look at this color. I hope that color is coming through, because it is nasty. Shaking the paint sets one of the hardest parts. Alright, so I'm just going to take some of this. And as I was assuming this was a pipe, we'll get some of this radioactive goo coming out. We'll just drop some along the pipe. Maybe at the other end of the pipe. So you put it along these bracing points, makes it look like it was leaking out. I'm just going to throw some over here. Various spots just for. And this I don't really paint on, I more just dab it. Like these divots, they're great spots to put little pools of radioactive goo. Hope there's no turtles in there. If there are, I hope they're not teenagers. <laughs> Okay, I'm not funny. So, bring it up so you can see a little bit better. See all those little spots that I put. Still learning my software too, that pause, that's fine. Alright, so, I think this piece 
is almost done. The um, the sign though, that is just way too bright, and so is that blue bin. So for that, I need to hit put some wash. Now I've got a bunch of different washes I could use, but I bought this giant bin thing here of sepia wash. This has been probably my favorite wash to use because it just makes everything look old and dirty. And the size of it, I couldn't turn it down for the price. I would found I was using a lot of sepia wash, so it's just a little bit on here. I'll dull down the blue container and dull down this side a bit. Not a lot, but just enough to make it look dirty. Perfect. That's it. The rest of it is pretty old. Well, maybe you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the uh, oil can thing here. The tires, it's not going to show up on at all. So. Keep calling it an oil can. I, I, it's a barrel. More fun than a barrel of monkeys. So there. I'm going to call that complete. Um, the only other thing that I would be doing with it is when I'm done, um, I spray it with a matte clear coat. And that just makes sure the paint doesn't uh, come off when I'm handling it. But that's going to look pretty good on my on my game table. I think it will anyway, so we'll see how that works. So uh, my next video, I've got other pieces here that I've already primed. This is like a, a reactor type thing. I've got this giant reactor. Uh, those are going to be fun to paint up. be doing those on another video. Again, all for Fallout. I've got uh, some walls that I need. They're already primed. They're ready to paint. Um, this might actually be my next episode. I'll do that up. I don't want these to be too long of videos because uh, watching me paint can be boring. Um, one of the other things I recently, uh, backed, I'm not uh, sponsored, just so you know, but uh, I backed a Kickstarter and it was for Canadian miniatures. <laughs> I it, I thought it was hilarious. So we've got, uh, I don't know how well these show up on here, but this is like a fighting goose. <laughs> Never mess with Canadian geese. And uh, a dire beaver. So I will be painting these guys up. Uh, they're not primed yet. But I'll do those beginning to end. Uh, primer right through to uh, painting. And that'll be on the next show. So I'd like to thank you for uh, tuning in. And if you have any comments, uh, leave them below.